All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. Today we're going to talk about something that's kind of interesting. I, I wanted to get Dylan on here to talk a little discussion about like financial role models and like, you know, you know what, what, what sort of impact that has and like, you know, how important they can be to your kind of financial health and well-being. Yeah. And I do not know what uh, what is happening. Haven't seen these. Not prepared. Uh, if you like two stupid guys uh, trade stocks, give us a like and subscribe. Whereas two guys kind of navigating the market, trying to create more wealth, if you will. Exactly. With that, we'll get to it. Two stupid guys trade stocks. So financial role models. I picked some public ones here, but like, uh, would you, would you say like you had someone growing up in your life that was like a personal financial role model? Um, I'm gonna go no, no, because I was not growing up. I I had no interest in stocks or wealth at that point. Yeah, I actually wanted to be a limo driver uh, when I was uh, till I was like 13 or like 12. I did not understand that they were driving other people around. I thought that meant that. I was wow. then going to be. Interesting. I think I, I think I figured that out when I was nine. Actually, I switched yeah. to be an astronaut. Yeah. Okay. Perfect plan. Yeah. You, you realize that they're also driving someone else's uh, ship around. But they're in space. <laughs> <laughs> but in space. Worth it at that point. Yeah. You know, I had a discussion with someone at work this weekend. It was interesting thought to me that, like, you know, it, within my family, certainly, I'm one of the first people to start thinking about money a little bit differently and like learn a little bit more about investing. Um, you know, there are other people that like, contributed to a 401k, but didn't really appreciate what was going on or like what, you know, where that went and how it grew. Like they, they didn't understand that or, um, you know, how to think about your time and value and that sort of stuff. Um, so most of my kind of, I would say, financial role models have come from the public domain. Um, it, these are just kind of a couple, uh, three, three guys that I kind of picked out here. Um, do you know who this guy is? It's the, uh, I don't know his name, but it's the rich dad, poor dad uh, yeah. guy. Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Now, of late, he has, uh, I think, betrayed much of the trust he has earned in the earlier years regarding uh, his kind of financial um, thought process. But I would say Rich Dad, Poor Dad, certainly for myself, was a pivotal book in that it made me think about um, money in a different way. Like, you know, certainly my job is more, you know, for those of you who have never read the book, uh, he talks about his 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 biologic father and then his friend's father. Um, his biologic father is very smart, like a uh, gentleman does, um, you know, he becomes like, I think, the, the director of the Department of Ed Ed Education for the state of Hawaii. Uh, but he's always kind of, you know, gets promotion, gets another degree, gets promotion, gets another, another degree, and he's always spending everything he makes. So by the end, he's, you know, earning a good salary, but he's poor in essence in that he has, you know, not really retained much of his earnings. Um, you know, I don't know if you've heard the saying before. It's not what you make; it's what you uh, keep and invest that matters. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. A basic premise, Wait, right? What did he do recently that betrayed the trust of? Uh, he he has become my... like the financial guru type. You know, like uh, pay five thousand dollars to come for my online training course. Oh, yeah. It's sad, but oh uh, yeah, that does suck. Really? It, you know, just because like they're a role model doesn't mean that they, they need to be perfect. Uh, you, you take th certain aspects from all of these gentlemen uh, or, you know, people in your own personal life is kind of what my point was. So, yeah, you know, but I did learn from him that it is important to think about money and there are ways to earn money beyond like a, a, a job with a good salary. All right. Yeah. He also, um, he has a great video on YouTube on taxes. Okay. I don't know if you saw that one on like why like people who have like hundreds of employees will pay vastly less taxes and he breaks it down in a very simplified way. It's like a 15 minute video, I think. It's yeah. awesome. It's very, very good. Yeah. I mean, the, the tax code in the United States is certainly geared towards, you know, property owners and business owners. That, that yeah. Have a lot of advantages. He goes on as when you provide employees salary, you then get stuff back from the government and tax decreases, all this stuff. But it was actually, it was very, very good. And didn't yeah. he, in the book, didn't he like play Monopoly with his dad a lot? I don't recall that one. I can't remember. All right. Yeah. I never read it. I just, I was, yeah. I was told that. Yeah. I, I read it. I, I don't remember that, but I, I read it years ago. Um, Warren Buffett, the OG of investing. You know, th this is probably the person that like I try to look up to the most as far as like my investment style. I try to emulate him um, in terms of patience and letting things play out over years. 
uh, trying to look at the the core business in terms of valuation and trying to always, you know, buy a dollar for 50 cents. You know, that's that's basically what his style of value investing is all about, you know, buying yeah. good companies at good prices. He is obviously amazing. Um, I will say it is harder to find discounts for companies now in his style. I feel like if you look at which, OK, I'm not saying like bringing down Warren Buffett here. He's, he's clearly like arguably the greatest one ever. But yeah. um, a lot of the really good years or returns and stuff was like 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, just going out there. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a, a, there was a financial knowledge gap at the time where, you know, he, as he has talked about, it's like at one point, all you had to do to find an undervalued company was to like read the finances, like the financial documents. And that was it. Like just people just didn't do it. Yeah. Know? It was a simple now, plan. Yeah. Now, like PLTR, there's nine YouTube channels that'll go over their financial documents, right? Exactly. So yeah, you nine. Know exactly what they're worth. I think nine's an under, uh, underestimation. There's probably, probably 900. Probably, yeah. <laughs> True. Um, but, you know, the, the other aspects in like, terms of his personal life, I don't know if you've ever, uh, you know, heard this, but, like, you know, he still lives in the same house he bought, like, in the 1960s. Paid, like, $37,000 for it. Yeah, yeah, he definitely lives way below his uh, means, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Um, for for him, investing was is more uh, an intellectual pursuit than it is like truly trying to like change his life in terms of which maybe that's why he's so good at it. He's I get that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, you know, he he wasn't uh, wasn't counting on each and every dollar to uh, you know kind of support his lifestyle. I mean, he does fly on private jets though. So <laughs> yeah, well, planes are gross, so that makes yeah. sense. Well, he, the business advantage, he's talked about that a little bit in the past. But uh, so investing wise, Buffett's my man. You know this guy? That's Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. Yep. You know, like, what do you, what do you think is important to learn from Dave Ramsey? What can you learn from him? This is going to make me sound very pompous. I think he's great if you're very new to this world. And as soon as you start to have good self-discipline, if you don't have self-discipline, he's fantastic. Yeah. If you do have self-discipline, you're, in my opinion, leaving a ton of money on the table. Just credit cards alone. Mm -hmm. Completely agreed. Yeah, I, you know, Dave Ramsey, I think, is a little bit simplistic, but I think the important thing he teaches you about uh, finance and investing is that uh, there are ways to become wealthy, even with like limited annual income. You know, I, I don't know if it was him that talked about it, but the there was a gentleman who was like a, a janitor for the state of Missouri or Mississippi that earned like never earned more than $40,000 a, a year in his career, but he still retired a millionaire because he lived below his means and he invested properly. You know, like yeah. that, that is a Dave Ramsey kind of story, you know, where it, you don't have to make this extravagant income. You don't have to have, you know, all these side businesses or anything like that. But if you, if you live below your means and you, you save and invest over time, that money compounds. And that's what Dave Ramsey tries to teach his people. Yeah. The part that I, I greatly disagree on, um, I once again, if it's not aimed towards like me or something, but like, for instance, he hates credit cards, mm -hmm. which if you pay your credit, I can pay my credit card off, like honestly, more than once a month. I never have a balance. I never pay interest. And the amount of free flights you get, the amount of free money just from like my Costco card, I get like 500 bucks. A year, it's, just, it's, it's literally free money. Yeah. And then I, I also, I don't like the snowball effect. That he okay. does when you try to pay down the do you want to go over the snowball effect real quick and then also the snowball effects basically is if, if you're in debt and you want to pay off your debt to get out of it what dave says is you start with the smallest balance and pay towards the largest balance so you're working from smallest to largest yeah which that's stupid in my opinion that you should you should pay off the highest interest first because that's when it's costing the most money the yeah. thought is that you you pay something off you get this feeling of oh cool that's one less payment right yeah, when exactly. fiscally it, that's not the smartest thing you should do. You should pay off the highest, you know, interest. And a way to get over that would be calculate the interest per different modality, whatever your, you know, yeah. three credit cards, seventeen, nineteen, eight, and then pay off one that has the most interest. It'll take longer, but you can literally see calculate your interest per month on money that you were literally losing will decrease faster that way. Yeah, I don't. You're advocating for the debt avalanche. You know, Dave's basic story is that like you know. He it's all money is all about psychology, and that's why he says the the debt snowball wins for him. Is that you know if you could make 
financially prudent decisions and based upon numbers like you know you're advocating for you wouldn't be someone that got into tens of thousands of dollars of credit card debt in the first place <laughs> yeah it's a solid argument okay yeah <laughs> i mean I, I i i get both sides i think i think dave is is good i think reading his total money makeover is is very reasonable it's a super light read you read it in like a day um but it, it's good then that gives you kind of more personal basic financial um you know planning and ways to think about your your basic household finances, uh, because ultimately, if, if you have your basic household finances um, kind of secured, that, that gives you the opportunity to invest for things. You know, I, I would disagree with him on, on several points, but, um, you know, I, I think his his point there is that, you you know, you do the, the basics really well, and then you can you can kind of execute on these further points. Yeah, no, his basics are great. Also, I'm, I guess that's a solid point, because like when people call in, they're like, yeah, I make a hundred grand a year. I have fifty thousand dollars on credit cards. I'm like, what are you doing? How are we, like what what's happening? And it's yeah. like they didn't have like a life event where they got in a car accident or something or something bad happened. They're just like, no, I just go to Cancun like every month. Like this is your fault. Like it was. <laughs> so those people, it, it does make sense. Yeah. Now I don't know. I just want to throw this thing out there. If you, if you guys are curious, we can do kind of like separate videos on some of these folks and like you know what what specifically we do or do not like about them. But yeah, I want to get this discussion going about like uh, financial role models and how important that can be. Like you know, not having someone in, in your family or your network that thinks about money, um, you know, a little bit differently. It's not just like something that they just comes and goes and like they don't even passively just kind of like to deal with it. They just whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Let us know what you think. Have a good one.